This video will address the evolution of homosexuality. Now the common claim is that homosexuals can't reproduce, so if evolution is true, homosexuality should have been removed from the gene pool quite a long time ago. Um, there are many reasons that this is false. To begin, I'd like to point out the fact that it's not just humans that have homosexual interactions. In fact, I think it's 500 um, species of animals, ranging from elephants, dolphins, squirrels, birds, fish, and even reptiles. All of them um, demonstrate certain degrees of homosexuality. Uh, in fact, in, I think it's American bison, male-to-male -male intercourse makes up to half of all mating. But it, it's not just all males, actually. Um, female chimps and antelopes specifically do it with an extremely high frequency. Now the question arises, well, what, what could be the advantage of this? Um, you need to understand one thing, and that's that evolution happens to populations, not really individuals. And saying that an individual evolves or that evolution applies to individuals is a bit like saying that, that one particular pix that one pixel on your computer screen kind of makes up the picture. Um, it, it's an inaccurate statement, and you need to understand exactly how um, evolution applies to populations in order to understand the evolutionary consequences of homosexuality. With this in mind, ask yourself, what would be the, the social benefits of a population if all members were able to enjoy the bonds of a sexual relationship, as opposed to just male and females? In, in chimps, this is essentially a form of social cement, strengthening bonds and allowing the population as a whole to be much more close-knit in increasing the overall fitness. Um, additionally, a, a recent study showed that, that maternal relatives of homosexual men had significantly more children than those um, without um, homosexual relatives. So, in essence, their evolutionary fitness is increased overall because of homosexual sons. Now, uh, understand this, and, and again, the prior statement in the context of evolution happening to populations. Um, with this in mind, you can clearly see that homosexuality does have certain advantages um, in the long run, while not to individuals, to populations as a whole. Now, onto the genetics of homosexuality. Well, the first and most important thing that people need to understand is that there's no such thing as a gay gene. It doesn't happen. Ev or homosexuality is a polygenic trait, which means that there are many, many, many genes controlling it. Think of eye color, but kind of a hell of a lot more complicated. You know how one parent can have green eyes, the other parent will have brown eyes, and the kid will end up with blue eyes. Why? Because some obscure grandparent or great-grandparent just happened to have blue eyes. Well, that's kind of the way that homosexuality works, only a lot more complicated. There are many genes controlling it, so isolating or identifying one gene or doing a simple, you know, Punnett square to try and determine the outcome is, is simply impossible. There are, there are so many complex interactions involved that it simply can't be done. Another thing that needs noted is that homosexuality isn't an all-or-nothing trait. There's a continuum. In the sense, if you're not either completely gay or completely straight, some people are a little gay, some people are kind of gay, and, and anywhere in between. So with this in mind, people that are gay and that do have a, I don't want to say a high percentage of gayness, but it's a polygenic trait, remember, they are still able to have kids, or offspring, rather. So... With that in mind, that's another example of just how things like that could be passed on um, in a population. Finally, there's a lot of evidence that homosexuality has an extremely high maternal effect rate, in the sense of it's not necessarily under genetic control um, either. Uh, there have been many studies that have shown that the more male children uh, a woman has, the higher the probability that her later younger males will become homosexual. Now, why could this be? Now, the leading theory is that over time, the, the female, the mother, becomes immunologically sensitized to the male proteins, which of course she doesn't have, growing inside her. So what does she do? She makes antibodies against them. Now, those antibodies will effectively inhibit the male masculinization proteins, overall diminishing the male masculinization process, which is, is a fundamental theory and kind of the, the backbone as to exactly how homosexuality can occur. That's the, that's the biological plausibility portion of it. Lastly, I wanted to take two seconds to touch on the ad hominem um, fallacy. An ad hominem attack is something where you say that a person's argument is wrong by refuting or by attacking their character as opposed to the actual argument. And their character attack, or and the character attack, is exactly what you're using to justify your position. For example, if I say you're wrong because you're ugly, that's a perfect example of an ad hominem fallacy. Whereas if I were to simply say you're wrong because of X, Y, and Z, and oh, by the way, you're ugly, that is not an ad hominem fallacy. And that's a distinction that needs to be made because I think that a lot of people are confused about that. So, just something to think about. Thanks again for your time, guys. Have a good one.